Hello and welcome to InfoTubification. I am Skynet. Enjoy your networking for now. Hello InfoTubers. Today's video is going to show you how to uh, put a firewall on that connection you just made for your network between your Xbox and Windows Media Player as well as forwarding your internet connection from your PC and or laptop to your Xbox and adding a firewall to that when you're out and about. So the first thing you want to do is go to your firewall. I have it here conveniently. If you don't know where it's at, just hit control panel and there will be your firewall. Double click that. It will open this right here. Uh, this is your firewalls tab obviously. So you click it on. You go to your exceptions and it'll give you some stock ones that it usually comes with which is uh, file and printer sharing, um, remote desktop, and UPnP framework. Those are the three I believe that come with uh, Windows XP. But on top of that you're going to be want wanting to add um, other ports and programs through your firewall. So to the first thing we want to add is the Xbox ports so our connection to play online still works. So we would uh, click the add port button, name whatever the first port you want it to be. Um, I usually name each one by which port it is. So for example, Xbox 3034. If you want, you can get specific and say this one's TCP or UDP. I don't just because I have it memorized. Um, here you enter the port number. Uh, We'll use 3074 for example, and you hit TCP and click OK. I'm not going to because I already have it. Um, and since 3074 is both UDP and TCP, you do have to make a second one, but the second time around, click UDP. Uh, the same thing goes for port 53, it's both TCP and UDP. Um, go, it also goes, uh, or port 80 is TCP and port 88 is UDP so those are those are only one port each and for your Windows Media Player network sharing you want to forward those ports as well um, those ports are 10284 UDP 10283 UDP they just kinda count down uh, 10282 UDP 10281 UDP 10280 UDP and the last one is 10243 TCP. That's the only TCP for your Windows Media Player Network Sharing Service. So once you got all those added, um, at this point, I would also recommend you add the remote desktop. Go ahead and check mark that. I'm not going to because it's not the computer I remote desktop on. I'll show you that part later. So once that's all added, you you go to your Advanced tab. Oh no, I'm sorry. So you click OK. Um, from here you want to double check to make sure all your connections are firewalled and that's represented by the little lock tab so I'm firewalled and there you go you set up your firewall now if you wanted to add a program for example let's say I wanted to add uTorrent like I have here you go to add program um, sometimes it may actually pop up here um, it'll pop up with common things that use the internet to update and things like that so you can always go through this and add a bunch if you want to, for example, like iTunes. Um, but if you don't find it here, you would click your browse, go to your C or your local disk, go to your program files, and go through your program files and pick which ones you want to allow to connect to the internet. For example, uTorrent if you want to make a uh, special firewall rule, but even though when you download uTorrent, it uh, gives you the option to make a it gives you the option right on the install to make a firewall rule so you don't have to worry about that um, but that's just for other programs that you want to allow to use the internet um, the next part of this video is remote desktop um, this one's the one I use for connecting to the remote desktop so I already have it as you can see down here um, connected to the remote on the other computer that way I can show you what settings you have to have on the other computer so let's pretend I walked over to the other computer and I'm there now and once you're there, the first thing you want to do is add user accounts or add a password to your user account and add extra user accounts um, if you want to at this point also. Um, to do a password, you go to your control panel, user accounts, uh, enter a password. 
Um, by the way, your administrator does have to have a password for remote desktop to work, so make sure you put a password on your administrator account, uh, as well as all the other accounts that you decide to um, allow access with remote desktop. So you go ahead and close that out once you got it all saved. Um, you want to enable your firewall, obviously. Um, if you want your server to also serve as your main media player network sharing service, just, you know, forward all the ports that you need to. I also have my Xbox connect through it. Um, most people probably won't, unless you have two network cards. This is usually for laptops when you're out and about. Uh, but you just forward the ports for your media player, um, and then you go ahead and check mark your remote desktop. Um, that one comes with your Windows firewall, as well as UPN, UPnP framework, and I forgot what the other one was. But yeah, it comes with, oh, file and printer sharing. So you got to make sure to check file and printer sharing uh, and remote desktop. Okay. So you click OK on that. And the next thing you want to do is to actually allow your computer. So you right click on your my on my computer on the desktop or in the start menu go to the and hit uh, properties go to your remote tab allow users once you click this and you apply uh, all administrator accounts will be allowed to uh, log into it as long as they know the password and the the username um, if you want to select other people to use it you click select remote users add and right here it'll have these uh, ob object types you want to leave that alone um, from the location which is your basically your server or the the basic location that you want to um, let you know use remote desktops it'll be your, your computer and here's where you want to enter the name and since I know mine's is Skynet that that's just the admin but you can still add it again if you want to it'll pop that up but if you don't want to do it that way out, cancel, um, go ahead and do all that and hit OK, and now your, your computer is pretty much set up. So now you want to go to the computer that you're going to use to connect to your remote desktop. Oh, one more thing, make sure you remember what your, uh, your IP address, either if you set it static or if it's dynamic. Um, if it's dynamic and you don't know what your IP address, again, you can go to uh, start menu, run, type in command cmd, and then type in ip backslash c-o-n-f-i-g, that is ip config, uh, or no, my bad, ip config backslash all. And once you hit enter on that, it'll pop up with your, your, uh, your IP address that your computer is connected to. And the last thing you want to do is to make sure this computer as well as the uh, the computer that's going to connect to it are on the same uh, the same work group. So the way you check that, um, sorry about that, I skipped ahead of myself. The way you would check that is once again go to your start or desktop, right click on my computer properties or click properties. Then uh, on the tab right next to general, it'll say computer name. Click that tab. Uh, your computer description can be whatever you want, um, whatever you want it to, to pop up as on your uh, on your router. Also, the way you change your work group, if you want to customize it, you hit change. And right down here, it'll have your work group, and you can change it to whatever you want. And you click OK, and it'll be changed. You do have to reset the computer to uh, or restart the computer to apply the changes so make you know keep that in mind every time you uh, you decide to change um, the network ID you don't have to mess with too much and that should be pretty much it so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this out now we're gonna go, to, go ahead and connect uh, I'm gonna hit remote desktop if you don't have a shortcut you go to your all programs accessories and it should be under that remote desktop all Windows XP should come with remote desktop unless you pirated it um, this won't be filled out here this is where you would put your computer name 
mine I could actually put the computer name but I decided to put in the the IP because it's a lot easier it doesn't want to get confused with capital letters and lowercase it's that much easier uh, you want to put always ask for credentials uh, displays however you want it to be um, you go to your local resources tab here I suggest on your local devices and resources you check mark everything just so you can use everything if um, if you if you click more it'll come up with your drives and you want to go ahead and click those um, on as well so you can transfer files from computer to computer um, show you a little bit of that later but yeah you just go ahead and check mark everything so make sure you hit your more uh, go to your local resources go to the bottom to local devices and resources um, hit more and basically check mark everything under programs this is just if you want to choose a certain program to start up when you connect I don't um, if you're just doing it in your local area network which we are at this moment you would just pick LAN um, or if you're on a high-speed internet you pick LAN so it, it just depends on your internet connection first thing you want to do is go ahead and save all that once you put all your settings hit connect pop up with this window asking if you trust it obviously you do if you know what you're connecting to you connect uh, once again it's just giving you a little warning click yes and it'll come up with this the log on to windows uh, screen so you will put in whatever your username is or your administrator name if you didn't change it it would just be administrator um, if you did change it it would be whatever you changed it to mine is skynet and from there you put in your password and hit enter and you should be on your remote desktop simple as that so uh, yeah, just all you basically got to do is uh, forward the ports on your firewall, just check mark it. Um, if your router doesn't have it built in to forward the ports, you just do the same thing on that. Um, remember your IP address, and enter the IP address, you can add more users. Um, and to show you how to file share across computer to computer, you go to your My Computer, the one that's, you know, the remote. Um, and then hit your C drive and that is your your local disk is your C drive of the remote desktop computer now the computer that you're on that's accessing the remote desktop computer you once again click my computer and these will be your drives down here such as C D and E on Skynet mobile so even if you have a CD in, you can transfer files on a CD anyways um, you double click C on here Go to your documents and settings, click your administrator account or whatever you named it. Go to your documents. And let's see if I have any, any files here. Okay, I finally finally found a picture. Anyway, so as you can see I found a document under my uh, my my other computer, my one that I'm using to access remote desktop, and it's a picture, and it's this combust picture. I like it. Combust cannabis on the daily, son. Anyways, so I'm going to transfer that to my my local computer. I don't even have to add this to open. I can simply just drag and drop onto the desktop, and there you go. Now I have it on this computer. Combust cannabis on the daily. So uh, yeah, I hope you like that. That that was a quick file transfer. If you have something large, it could take 20 minutes. For example, a movie. I I think one movie takes five to ten minutes or something like that. If you got ten movies, it's it's gonna take at least an hour to two hours. And also, when you close out, the computer will continue to run, so it'll stay on. It'll stay on. Uh, you can set it to shut off and actually wake up on a whenever it gets uh, a signal from the internet. To, to for remote desktop but I'll show you more on that later when I show you the, the advanced remote desktop uh, remote desktoping but that's it for now I hope you guys enjoy your fire, firewall to network sharing connections as well as your remote desktop connections so you don't have to go back and forth between your PC and laptop to you know share files you can do it all from one spot and play video games all at the same time Hope you enjoyed this lesson. Now go on to our, I mean your networking. Info tubification logging off. User signed out.
Goodbye.